call to order. This is the seventh regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. As is uh, customary, our city clerk will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. All government and all private institutions must be designed to promote and protect and defend the integrity and the dignity of the individual. And that is the essential meaning of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Bauk? He will be uh, late. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clyunas? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Zurich? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Vu? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. Uh, looking for approval of the minutes of the uh, last council meeting. Oh, I am very sorry. <laughs> Let's do the Pledge of Allegiance first, and I think uh, we'll have Alderman Hannah do that. How's that, sir? Good idea. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mark, and thanks for the reminder. Oh, we're looking for approval of the minutes. President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a memo from uh, Angela Payne, the HR director. Uh, I guess from Tom Pitch to Angela Payne advising that uh, they're requesting a change to their representative on the Health Insurance Committee. Presently, the committee member is Mike Dietz and informing the city that he would be unable to complete his term and would like to replace him with John Bridges. President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to accept and file the resignation. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. This dated July 6th. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. John Bridges to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Michael Dietz, whose term expires on 4-30-09, signed by the mayor. <coughs> I, believe that, I believe that lies over, Mayor. Yeah. Is that a lies over? Yeah, all of these will be lies over. It does lie over. Thank you. And on the confirmation, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Peter Mayer to be considered for appointment to the Civil Service Commission to fill the unexpired term of Eldon Berg, whose term expires 422-13. I guess this is one of the mayor's appointments as well. That also lies over. And uh, at least in my packet, there was a, a, a resume from Peter Mayer. I don't know if all the council got that or not. I believe that is probably on the back of the document. It's on the back. Yes, it is. And now the confirmations. Everybody submit the following appointments for your consideration. To the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, Aaron Brault to replace Jim Halbert, representative of Sheboygan County Government, whose term <coughs> expires on 4-26-2010. Amy Peterson to replace Aaron Brault, private individual city resident, whose term expires on 4-26-2010. Thomas Holton to replace Thomas Henning, large business owner, whose term expires on 4-26-2010, signed by the mayor. Motion to approve, Alderman Boren. Motion to approve the appointments, Mayor. Second. Have a motion and a second. Under discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, first this evening will be Jeff Shuko. And Mr. Shuko, can you give me your home address, please? 2411 Camelot Boulevard. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Mayor Ryan, Your Honor, Mrs. Richards, Attorney McLean, Council members, and citizens. I wanted to speak this evening just briefly 
perhaps to provide a little information in regards to the Blue Harbor Gull infestation. And this is in reference to the recent Sheboygan Press article, Dirty Birds. Uh, for those of you who have read that article, Chip Lovell, who's the district supervisor with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Wildlife Services Program in Wapan, said there's no silver bullet for dealing with the birds. He mentioned they can be scared away using pyrotechnics, scarecrows, and other harassment devices. These 100 to 1,000 year old tactics are what Green Bay was offered as a solution to their problem last year. The result was birds were scattered all over the area and to neighbor co neighboring communities, and what a mess it was. This approach may sustain their budget, but it does nothing to solve the problem. The long-term solution, one of them that I've worked out, is an option of my abatement programs. Uh, this program was submitted to the USDA and to our legislative representative, Van Akron. They were both given a copy of my programs to review. The USDA said their copy must have been lost in the mail being returned to me, along with additional information I had requested because I'm working on products now to take care of geese. And uh, let's see, Mr. Van Akron's office told me he must have lost it. And that was after I had mentioned to everyone involved with this that I had provided those two that I did a study that cost $15,000 and there was some patent sensitive information in there. So, well, being government entities, I guess I shouldn't have been too surprised. <laughs> now, on the other hand though, Senator Leibham, I, I provided a copy to, and he reviewed his copy and returned it to me personally and reviewed it with me in a timely fashion. So I was very impressed with a lot of what I've been hearing about Senator Leibham lately. Uh, right after the USDA's appearance here, I, I noticed uh, businesses here experienced a huge number of gulls showing up on their roofs. And I don't know if they did a demonstration of abatement or, or what happened, but uh, these are businesses that are contracted with me to keep their roofs clear because of the obvious, obvious health concerns and facility inspections that health officials, uh, that they must pass these inspections to stay in business. Uh, the age-old tactics that were recommended to us here, really, I can tell you from experience, stand no chance of competing with the programs that we've developed, uh, if nothing else from an economic standpoint. And I guess I'd be willing to demonstrate ag that again to anyone interested. On another note, with the intramural football season now, starting in July at Kiwanis Park, I've had some parents come up to me already and say that this site is already a mess with bird droppings all over. Uh, in the past, the kids' uniforms were covered with bird droppings from head to toe at the end of these games, and I can tell you that is not a healthy situation, especially since uh, we've been made aware that this swine virus isn't really just a swine virus, and it's being carried by these migratory birds. The gulls in particular, which are scavengers, pick it up normally first, and they just migrated here from Mexico. No wonder we have the highest flu rate in the nation right now, Wisconsin, that is. And that's about all I have on that right now. I just wanted to say the fireworks, Mayor, they were great. They were fantastic. It was some of the best fireworks I've seen in a long time. And I'd like to commend the police chief, too. The police uh, department down there did a really excellent job. They were really good with everybody. The coverage was great. They covered each other really well. And I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shuko. Uh, if I may add, we do have an upcoming meeting with uh, the Department of Fish and Wildlife regarding the gulls on South Pier especially because they are a problem and uh, we need to do something about them. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the list is Pat Dugan. Good evening. Pat, can I have your home address, please? 1954 North 3rd Street. And you want to get the mic right in front of you? And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Good evening. My name is Patrick Dugan. I'm the Vice President of the Public Works Union. Ask me Local 2039. 
and a longtime resident and taxpayer here in the city of Sheboygan. As a citizen of Sheboygan, I have watched the quality of life diminish. Many of our services and things that we enjoyed have either fallen by the wayside or been dramatically reduced. Our roads, parks, sewers, along with the rest of our infrastructure is in dire need of maintenance and repair. Unfortunately for all of us who love this city, we are faced with a large financial crisis. Tonight, you, the older persons, will be voting on a resolution called the Star Resolution, hoping to address the financial problems for now and the future. According to this resolution, Bill Bittner, Public Works Director, was charged with reducing his budgets to try and address this problem. His proposal, if passed, will dramatically impact the future of our city's services in a very negative way, all but eliminating the very thing that we, the taxpayers of Sheboygan, pay taxes for. There was also another proposal put forth last week, unfortunately at the last minute, by the DPW union that deserves consideration. We introduced it late because as of yet, the union has not been given the chance to give our input in solving the budget crunch, and we had no idea what Mr. Bittner had in mind. The director's proposal, according to him, will cut or reduce services substantially. Ours will not. All the services that your constituents are paying for will continue with minimal impact on the taxpayer. It will also generate the savings that the Star Resolution called for. Please seriously consider this proposal for the sake of Sheboygan's future. We also look forward to sitting down with the city to help the, solve the city's budget problems. Thank you very much. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dugan. <clears throat> Next on the list would be Lee Montemayor. And Lee, can you give me your home address, please? Uh, 1015 Logan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam City Clerk. And Mayor Ryan, Council Members, thank you for the opportunity and time to be heard tonight on the STAR Resolution. I think the resolution is somewhat confusing with wording that may be difficult to understand. I'm all for saving monies and making our city departments more efficient, but at some level, you have to care about services and the underlying needs of people and not get caught up in the public relations fight around the 2009 budget. The resolution deals mostly with the 2009 budget and not the 2010 budget that should be worked on at this time. The 2009 budget was approved in November of 2008. The 2010 budget process is outlined in our city codes, sections 2, 901 through 907, clearly directs that next year's budget is to be addressed now. We've been through tough budget concerns before. In 2006, we start with a $3.6 million shortage in our budget. We survived that shortage with a good executive submitted budget and then tweaked by our talented council members without a tax increase. It was also accomplished in 2007, 2008, and 2009. That, ladies and gentlemen, is very impressive accomplishment by our city elected team and our talented department heads. Those accomplishments point out good leadership, and I congratulate all the individuals involved in that historical four-year success. The STAR resolution does mention that state statutes regarding police and fire department, but clearly it does not say their 2009 approved budget cannot be changed. Take it out of other departments instead. This, ladies and gentlemen, creates distrust. There shouldn't be any sacred cow department in our city. We need to treat all our city employees equally and with respect and fairness they deserve. When our city has an emergency, all of our departments respond if needed. They respond as a team effort as it should be. My understanding is that some new state statutes just passed or will be passed shortly 
will mandate that the police and fire services budget for 2010 be no less than the 2009 budget. This confirms my, my, this confirms my concerns of employees not treated equally. Our police and fire department make up 54% of our city's budget. So this means it will always be locked into that number or possibly more. There's no doubt that our obsolete IAS department software should continue to be upgraded as approved in our 2009 budget, as well as the assessor's software improvements. I wish former IAS director Tudor Lee could have continued his work in our city, but we cannot blame an employee for an opportunity of bettering himself and his family. I thank him for the work he did while employed on our city's team. He showed us how obsolete our IAS department was and started the upgrading of this technology. Bringing the city's ambulance service in-house has proven to be a benefit to our city's taxpayers as a source of revenue for tax relief. Utilizing our talented, qualified, experienced firefighters slash paramedics labor for is to be commended. To my fellow union brothers and sisters, I say, remember, 85% of, of Sheboygan's 2009 budget is for salaries and benefits. If you were making up your personal budget and came upon an 85% figure, you would also be focused on that 85% item for cost reductions. Two cases in point. One, having a 12% pension plan using only city contribution is unheard of in the private sector. Most pension, private pension plans require an employee to contribute at least 50% to make a 6 to 10% pension plan. Number two, the unheard of practice of unlimited banking of sick days and then not, and not using them as sick days, but rather as revenue after retirement is also not allowed by most private sectors. Most private sectors will allow you accumulation of only 30 days and are lost upon retirement. Excuse I me, challenge my like, union brothers. Would you like additional? Please. Go ahead. I challenge my union brothers and sisters to be a true union brotherhood and willing to share a wage freeze, furlough, or wage cut. All employees can be retained if all are willing to work and share the pain of less money available. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Mr. Montemayor. Next. Next is Milton Storm. Milt, would you please give me your home address? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court, and that's in the city of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I would like to thank Sue Richards and her department for allowing me to address this council on a very sensitive issue. Congratulations to Mayor Ryan for restoring my trust in city government. I do challenge some of the new older persons to assist us to move Sheboygan in a more positive direction. Attending last week's committee of the whole was quite an experience. It seems some emotions went rapid, frustration set in, and even a few tempers may have flared up a bit. I want to compliment Alderman Gisha and Alderman Corey Balk for their restraint, candor, and truthfulness. Alderman Gisha had every right to show frustration when some citizens had very little to offer. I still have to speak to Alderman Balk to see if we both share the same theology of love. After listening to the city clerk's proposal at the Committee of the Whole, I felt it an obligation to respond to some of the negative comments said at that meeting. Therefore, instead of asking for a 1% decrease in the city clerk's office, I am recommending a 1% increase for the coming year. To make up that difference, I recommend that the fire department and public works departments find a way to re reduce their budgets by an additional 1.5%. I realize by making such a suggestion, I will receive a lot of flack from the labor union personnel. 
In my opinion, there are some employees in the departments, in those departments, including administrative personnel, who are being overpaid and receive lucrative benefits. To be fair, there are some in those departments who may be underpaid. I have found it more convenient to pay my water bill at the water department office. I must admit that there are also some young ladies who could give the city clerk's office some very strong competition in niceness. I've discovered that over 60% of my three-month water bill is collected by the water department for fire protection and for public works department. By my calculation, less than 40% of my water bill goes to the water department, unless they are, of course, considered public employees. I was saddened that the provision that the previous council paid out the storm water fee. I ask for no praise or glory, nor do I expect any competition that my last name being Storm. I recommend reinstuting those charges, but, re but renaming those uh, charges as natural disaster water fees. The only two persons that I know that can calm a storm are Jesus and Milton, although others have tried with very limited success. We have the power at the local level to again restore the city of Sheboygan as a signing city on the shores of Lake Michigan. Let us show some honest compassion to Sue Richards' department and her employees who have gone beyond the call of duty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Storm. Last on the list is William Nyhaus. Is Bill here? I don't see I Bill I don't here. see him. No. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for speaking at the public forum this evening. We will now move on to our consent agenda. President Oren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I make a motion to accept and file all ROs and accept and adopt all RCs and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Okay. Motion and second. This will be 7 1 through 7 25. Under discussion? We'll take a roll. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes. Communications and petitions to be referred. 726. 727, uh, please uh, be aware 727 will also be referred to the Board of Parks and Forestry. Report of Officers 2, 728 through 745 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3. 7-46 by Alder, Alder Persons Bout, Kittleson, Gisha, Koth, and Heidemann lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a part-time crossing guard. Looking for a motion. President Boren? I'll make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, curious, does this require uh, just a simple majority? Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hanna. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 7 47. By Alderman, Alder Persons Bout, Kittleson, Gisha, Kath, and Heidemann, waiving the residency requirement in order to hire two summer help lifeguards for the 2009 season. Looking for a motion, President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Hanna. Great. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, if, if somebody could explain to me uh, whether we had contacted the YMCA, North and South Swimming Team, how was the search conducted to fill these spots? Alder Vice President Gisha. Um, I don't believe North South Swimming Team or the YMCA or the Red Cross were contacted. However, I believe in the future they will be contacted. Thank you, Vice President Gisha. Any further discussion? Alder Person Kittleson? Same. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. And Bowers? No. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries. 7 48 by Alder Persons Gisha, Clyunis, Boren, Montemayor, and Heidemann amending the 2009 general fund budget and authorizing the acquisition and impl implementation of new assessment software. Vice President Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, City Assessor Dave. Uh, Let's he is here this evening, is he here? Yeah, he is here uh, because I would like to ask for suspension of the rules and I thought he'd be able to give us an explanation. You'd like uh, if I Assessor Lutsky to speak on this? If I may, please. We need to have a motion to suspend. We, we need a... Uh, motion to suspend? If, if it, excuse me, if it's proper to have a explanation before the motion to suspend, if not, I'd be happy to make the motion to suspend. Motion to suspend first. Motion to suspend and to open the floor to Director, let's We have a motion to suspend and a, and a second. It's under discussion, and we have a motion to open the floor to... Is there any objection to the suspension? Is there any objection to the suspension, first of all? Alderman Rindfleisch. I withhold my objection until such time I can hear an explanation <laughs> Very uh, good. of the suspension. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> David Department head. Just, yeah. <coughs> City Assessor Lutsky. Hi. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come up here and address you. Um, what I wanted to just talk about regarding this is that typically um, we have a city ordinance that I was made aware of um, earlier today that I didn't really understand. And apparently the ordinance, um, in most cases, there's a, a purchasing procedure. And after reading this, I understand why it's been written um, in that purchasing commodities, if you're purchasing tires, vehicles, probably even com computers these days being a commodity, um, this purchasing procedure is excellent. Um, and it allows for um, exceptions, and that's what we're here to talk about right now. The purchasing procedure, um, there's an item B, and it says, all purchases shall be made in accordance with one of the following procedures, and then it says, except as otherwise provided by resolution of the Common Council. So that's what we're talking about right here, right now. And the reason I'm here is in most cases, the, uh, the authority in purchasing is uh, pretty much at the hand of the purchasing agent. But in some cases, when you're looking at software, such as I am, um, it's not a commodity. And it really shouldn't be um, at the hand of the purchasing agent. Rather, it should be at the hand of the department head who has to use the software. It's a significant decision, and you have to understand the business process. I've been here for a little over two years. I spent at least the first year learning the business process, and I've spent the last 12 months uh, doing my job as well as investigating other software solutions um, with a full understanding of the business process. A purchasing agent could never do that. I mean, they're doing other things. Um, it takes a great deal of effort to do this. And in doing that, you know, um, being the department head, I keep my eye on cost and the, the software that we are looking at implementing is the most widely used software in the state. It, it's the, a software uh, that allows for the best return on investment, which is 
you know, I think it was somewhere above 150% after three years or maybe 180%. So it's a good return on investment to the city. And I just wanted to come up and make, you know, a comment on that because there's been some folks uh, thinking that I was trying to undermine the purchasing process, and that's not true at all. There's a need for a purchasing agent, but not in a case when it comes to a complicated product like this. I also gave a presentation to the Finance Committee and feel that um, the, I should be held accountable for what I'm doing. In other words, if I move forward with the, with the software, if the software doesn't work properly, or if I don't do it to budget, I don't do it to schedule, then without a doubt that I, you know, some, there should be something done in terms of me or my position up to and including termination. Uh, so I do take this very seriously. My department takes this very seriously. Um, so I just felt that, you know, I think it would be good for me to at least address this um, in, in front of you tonight. So thank you. If I, if I may add also uh, this uh, same software is used by 26 of the 28 uh, municipalities in our county so it's it's not like it's a uh, it's a, some very specialized software just for our city it's 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 got a proven track record so alderman rentfleisch oh alderman bowers excuse me thank you mayor uh, could you uh, give us a, a cost estimate of this, and was it previously put in the budget, or is there money set aside for this? Uh... Vice President Gisher. Thank you. Um, this is not a budgeted item. Uh, it became, uh, as part of the uh, review and overview of the STAR proposal, looking at having department heads look forward and beyond 2009 to 2010. Uh, it was obvious there were some efficiencies with some investment. In this case, investing $84,907 and the efficiencies, meaning savings, being paid back within 20 months. So after 20 months, it all falls on your income side and uh, you never re reoccur those expenses. So uh, uh, Director Letsky did a extremely detailed presentation, I believe, to the mayor's office and then it was uh, made its way to finance and it was, a, it was an impressive it's the first time I've ever seen refer return on investment on a proposal in the city ever. And it really is uh, an important feature in what drives us in the future. And, and if I may add, the, uh, the savings in the future will come through uh, 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 savings in uh, cost of labor. So that's, that's the, uh, the purpose of this software package is to operate more efficiently. Alderman Reed Fleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, under the topic of discussion of suspension, I do not have any objection on that. Uh, I also think that any further discussion on this should be after a motion is made. I don't think we actually have a motion yet after suspension yet. So I'll wait for that before I bring it in. Okay. Place. Any further discussion on suspension of the rules? If there are none, may we take a roll call? It was a unanimous. They didn't object. So now we need a motion to pass the resolution. Oh, okay. Uh, looking for a motion to pass the resolution. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on passing this resolution. No discussion. Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 749 through 753 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 7-54 by finance submitting the Fire Department Ambulance Service Financial and Activity Report for 2008 generated by the Sheboygan Finance Department. Vice President Gisha. Uh, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted, please. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Okay, let's take a roll. Okay, we'll have a roll call on that, please. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Wangaman? Aye. 
Boren? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 7 55 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license <laughs> number 4243 based upon the applicant's ineligibility for the license. President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is David Payne here tonight. Uh, Mr. Payne is here. Uh, we'll call Mr. Payne up in just a couple of moments, Mayor. I'd like to make a couple comments first. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, this, is, this is a report that, that the Lawn Licensing Committee got from the uh, Assistant City Attorney, uh, Chuck Adams. Mr. Payne revealed a 1988 conviction for delivery of controlled substances which make him ineligible for the license. He also revealed a 2000 OWI second number of traffic violations. Uh, and this was the note to the committee uh, last Tuesday night. If he hasn't officially withdrawn his application by the time of the meeting, you should deny the license. Now this, uh, before we hear from Mr. Payne, whenever there's a felony conviction, it's a state statute that makes the applicant ineligible for the license. This is not a local ordinance. So, you know, if we were, Mr. Payne was not at our, was not at our committee meetings on advice from the attorney because he's ineligible for the license. However, even if we thought that Mr. Payne was the best applicant in, in Sheboygan for a, for a license, because of the state statute, we can't grant it because he has a felony conviction. So with that, I'll open up the floor to Mr. Payne if you'd like to make comments okay. to the council. If I, if I may first, I'd like Attorney McLean to speak on this. Do you have any? Sure. <clears throat> I guess to echo somewhat uh, President Boren's comments under uh, section 125.04 sub 5 of the Wisconsin statutes, uh, qualifications for licenses and permits for natural persons um, under subsection B, criminal offenders, no license or permit related to alcohol beverages may, subject to 111, 321, 322, or 335, be issued under this chapter to any person who has habitually been a law offender or has been convicted of a felony unless the person has been duly pardoned. Uh, the uh, exceptions there, 111, 321, 322, and so forth, uh, deal with the employment discrimination statutes. And I cite section 111, 335, well, to begin with, 111, 322 starts out subject to 111, 33 to 36. It's an act of employment discrimination to do any of the following, refuse to hire et cetera, et cetera, based on, uh, and one of the things is based on uh, uh, arrest or conviction record if, unless the uh, activity is substantially related to the license activity. 111.335 is entitled arrest or conviction record exception special cases uh, and uh, subsection 1CS, Therein says, notwithstanding 111.322, it's not employment discrimination because of conviction record to revoke, suspend, or refuse to renew a license or permit under Chapter 125, and that's the alcohol beverage licensing statute, if the person holding or applying for the license or permit has been convicted of one or more of the following. One, manufacturing, distributing, or delivering a controlled substance or controlled substance analog possessing with intent to manufacture, distribute, or deliver a controlled substance or controlled substance analog, uh, and a couple other subsections. So uh, apparently, and, and I didn't see the, uh, I looked on CCAP this afternoon, but uh, this conviction goes back to 88, so it wasn't on CCAP, but I, I'm assuming it's a felony <laughs> conviction, but even if it's not a felony conviction, uh, these exceptions uh, to the employment discrimination laws make it clear that it's not employment discrimination <coughs> to refuse to uh, uh, revoke, suspend, or refuse to renew a license or permit on those bases. Uh, 
and as I said, the qualifications also preclude a convicted felon unless they've been pardoned. And frankly, I don't know Mr. Payne's circumstances. Uh, I don't know if he's been pardoned. Uh, I don't know if, as I say, if it was a felony, but perhaps Mr. Payne can address some of those things. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Would you like to address counsel at this time, Mr. Payne? Please come up here. <coughs> if you can kind of twist the microphone that it's close, it okay. doesn't I just, I just, um, I'm kind of confused on the whole thing. Because, Put the mic up um, just a little bit so they can hear you. For 13 years after the conviction in 1988, I had an active bartending license in the state of in the city of Sheboygan, and I was an honest, straightforward bartender for 12 years. I made kind of a career out of it, and nobody ever said a word about renewing or not giving me a, a bartending license for all that time. I, I, how many people came into a bar that I served alcohol to safely went home safely, I took care of them while they were there, made sure they didn't overdrink and do anything wrong. Now when I do need the job the most, when I do need the license the most, I'm being refused. I feel that's very unfair. It's 21 years ago. I'm an honest, hard-working citizen, and I understand the laws. I understand what they're about. And everyone makes mistakes. It's obvious to that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had a bartending license for 13 years when I wasn't supposed to have one. I guess I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Does anybody on the council have any questions for Mr. Payne? Alderman Bowers? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Since you had a license for 12 years? Directly following the conviction. Uh, all right, and you gave that license up? I did. I moved out of state for Moved out of years. state, yes, and then sir. you moved back. And I had a bartending license in California while in, I was out in there. In California. Also. Are there uh, different degrees of felonies, or is a felony a felony? And that's, that's what's very unfair to me, I think, also. My, my, I'm being looked at as a, a criminal. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a violent person. I'm not, I shouldn't be compared to these people at all. I'm, I've been straightforward with everybody. I, I do everything, a law-abiding citizen, and I, I, I don't deserve to be treated this way when I need to make a living myself. Is there... And I, and I just also, I did push forward for the, the pardon. I, I've forwarded my paperwork to the governor for the pardon because I need it also because it's really difficult to get a job with this on my record. So the way the law is written, we can't even make an exception. Attorney McLean? How could they have, how could they have made an exception for 12 years directly following the conviction? Again, hold on just a second, Mr. Payne. Attorney McLean? Uh, well, I do know this, uh, I've been around for... 24 years. This wasn't always the law. I, I believe this, uh, I don't have all the legislative history here. It cites uh, various changes to the law. Uh, I know this was changed somewhere along the, along the line, so it very well could have been that uh, this prohibition on uh, manufacturing, distributing, or delivering controlled substances convictions may not have been in the statutes in 1988 or 90, uh, 89 or 90. Uh, there were changes in 93, 95, 97, 2001. Uh, I believe this has been in place for at least 10 years, but I couldn't tell you exactly when the statute was amended. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question for uh, Attorney McLean, uh, and I guess it really gets back to Alderperson Bauer's question. Uh, is there anything we can do to make an adjustment in this case, or is the law pretty cut and dry? Well, um, the qualifications for licenses and permits does say uh, that... It is a disqualifier if the person's been convicted of a felony has not been pardoned for that felony. Uh, and it's clear to me that the legislative intent on the provisions for saying it's not employment discrimination to look at those sorts of convictions on alcohol licensing is that um, the legislature feels that they are connected. Uh, so uh, I would 
I guess my short answer would be no. Alder Person Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, Sue Richards, uh, a city clerk, is there something that you understand about this? Why this person would have been okay years ago and now not? I, I see your head nodding. Um, well, Mr. Payne and I have had a discussion, and um, what I am anticipating happened is the law has not always been that way. However, if you go back in history to the law and licensing, which used to be J&L committee, if you go back in history, the committee was much less, how do I put this nicely? Strict. Thorough. Not even strict, thorough. Right now we have a law and licensing committee and have for the last handful of years a very in-depth committee that looks at everything. And I'm afraid that probably during the time when he was granted a license, it, the procedures were not, nowhere near the same. We do like seven or 10 records checks now. Virtually nothing was done then. And I'm guessing that's what's happened and it's unfortunate because he has had one for many, many years, but it, it, it slipped through the cracks and it should have been caught at that point, but it wasn't. Um, I did give him the paperwork to, you know, do the pardon, the governor's pardon thing, but unfortunately he's been caught in a really unfortunate set of circumstances. Older person, Monta Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. How long does it take to get a pardon? Attorney McLean, any idea? Six months, six years? Uh, it's totally discretionary on the governor's part. I was, told, I was told they do it like twice a year he does it, but it's it's only a couple. They don't do very many each year, so it could take up to five years. Does the fact that, that you're having difficulty getting employment or the fact that this is being, refu you're being refused employment for an old, old, old um, uh, mistake help you to get your pardon? It's, um, I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know that I'm not being refused work as in a bar because I don't have a license. I have jobs in bars, but right. I can't bartend alone, and those are the major hours I need. Right. Those are the hours where they need me there the most is when I'm there by myself because I'm more responsible to the next person that does have a bartending license who's a lot less responsible than I am. It's very difficult to put a man out of work that has been working. That is extremely difficult to do. Thank you. Uh, as, as the gentleman indicates, uh, can act as a bartender without a license as long as he's under direct supervision of someone who is licensed. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, so every year, our law and licensing committee takes this list of bartenders, and if they incur a felony during the year, they are turned down? Or is it just a renewal process? It, it's not all felonies. Not all fel felonies make them disqualified for a license. There's only certain that Attorney McLean just read. It's delivery, manufacturer of a controlled substance. It's not all felonies. Yeah, it's felonies that substantially relate to the license activity. Right. And then, yes, you've got to make a value judgment as to what relates to the licensed activity. But what I'm here to tell you is uh, the legislature, in my view, has made it pretty clear connection between not being employment discrimination to uh, refuse to issue a license, uh, alcohol beverage license, for manufacturing, distributing, or delivering a controlled substance when you've got a conviction of, of that sort. Um, so I, I think the legislature is saying they are connected. May I make another statement? Certainly. On the arresting officer of the time of the arrest in 1988. <coughs> He's no longer on the police force because he has been terminated from the police department of Manitowoc because he used um, unlawful ways of entrapment. And he's been that, uh, kicked off the, f and that, you know, that, I don't know if that has any bearing. I, I wouldn't think so because, I mean, basically, I mean, you were convicted, so that's... I understand that. that would, I was, you'd have to reopen the whole case on that, and I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, go down I that route today. another question. Maybe this is not related to it, but let's say we vote to give him a license. Do we go to jail, the council, or what happens? That would Just be... Uh, <laughs> 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 
You know, it does seem to me grossly unfair that he had a license for X amount of years, and now because he, he let his license lap with laps when he moved out of state, that you know he was good to bartend for 13 years, but now he can't. But I guess the rules are the rules. Um, it does seem very unfair, especially when he came to the Law and Licensing Committee and admitted what he had done, which normally we have people in front of the Law and Licensing Committee and the Council that do not, that do not state their offenses. Or is it otherwise? President Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ann. Uh, Mr. Payne did not appear before the committee, but that was on the advice of Attorney Adams because of the felony conviction. Mm -hmm. But he did put it on his application. He put it on his, he did truthfully fill out his application, yes. yes. Was I was told not to attend that meeting. Right. All the person, Mr. Mayor. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, Attorney McLean, so the state is saying that a controlled substance conviction relates directly to tending bar. Well, to licenses issued under the alcohol beverage licensing statute, which includes okay. bartender's licenses, yes. Okay. In other words, he can tend bar, right. but I he understand. can't be licensed to tend right. bar. He has to be with a licensed bartender. Thank you. Right. Thank you. you know, the obvious connection, uh, the legislature doesn't want convicted felons who are distributing controlled substances uh, licensed behind bars, tend and bar, for the uh, concern that they might, they're going to be dealing drugs at the tavern. Do we have any further questions for Mr. Payne? Thank you, Mr. Payne. Thank you. Any further discussion? Have a roll call, please. Heidemann? Would you like a clarification on what you're voting? Uh, the motion is to accept and adopt the report of committee, and the report of committee is to deny the applicant his license. So an I vote would be to deny. All right. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? No. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 7 56 by the Committee of the Whole recommending approval of STAR program proposals from Mead Public Library and Sheboygan Transit. Looking for a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. No discussion. We'll take a roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Deck, I'm sorry. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 7 57 by the Committee of the Whole recommending approval of STAR program proposals from the Mayor's Office, Finance Department, City Attorney, City Clerk, Human Resources, City Planning, and City Development, and the Department of Public Works. Vice President Gisha. If uh, City Clerk Richards could clarify the suggested amendment, does that need to be brought up at this time? No. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We are still looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion. Alderman Rinfleisch. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm assuming that the amended that's proposed that's going to come up later on is going to deal with the Public Works Department, just for Correct. clarification. Okay. Um, uh, my initial motion was going to actually pull out that Department of Public Works for a separate vote uh, compared to the rest of them. However, since there will be an amendment coming forth, I will uh, not make that motion this time, and we'll discuss the amendments later. Very good. Thank you, Eric. Further discussion? Alderman Bowers? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. 
I, I believe that was my question too, but I, I would just like for clarification, we will be voting on the dollar amount in this amendment, right? We cannot change the dollar amount, but uh, we can change the procedure or the... the uh, we are, we are voting basically, I believe it will be on the timing of the, the implementation for the Department of Public Works, correct? It's later. Right. That is on. That is later. Right now, you are voting on the whole package as is, but there is an amendment coming forth regarding the Department of Public Works and the timing of the implementation uh, regarding the Department of Public Works. All right. Any other further discussion regarding Alderman Hanna? Thank you. I just wanted to clarify because I I think a lot of us got a ton of phone calls at home. Uh, what will happen with 771, my assumption is if that passes, there will be a referral to Public Works. And at that point, we can have further discussions. And I know uh, most people at home were sensitized to the drop site. And, and those were suggestions of the department head. Uh, there will be further discussion <coughs> at the Public Works Committee on Thursday. Uh, so really, the, the procedure now is first that star and then the referral of the follow-up item, I guess, comes to Public Works? Um, the document wouldn't because it right. will have passed, perhaps, right. but the topic can be the brought up. The topic comes mm -hmm. to Public Works. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Next, we have uh, President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. This is just a housekeeping thing that perhaps the city clerk can clean up. Under uh, city planning, under that item, when the vote was taken, it says 12 ayes and 4 nays. There were only 15 people present, and I looked at the other ones, and they all... They all total 15, but for some reason that vote tally is incorrect. So just for housekeeping, for, okay. the, re for the record, you might, well, might want to. It's not, it's not going to change the vote. But no, I've got the just, roll calls here. Thank you. It might be the person that took the minutes. It might be the person that took the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Operator error. It could be operator error. Thank you, President Boren. <laughs> Alderman Sirk. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to, um, I'm going to vote no for this, uh, this program because uh, I think in a whole it's, 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 it's got some good merits, but... I think we were putting the, the, the cart before the horse. I would prefer to see the effect of the STAR program before approving what the STAR program is going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sir. Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. I do believe this is simply the report of the committee. The actual uh, vote on whether or not to implement is coming up at 764. Very good. Thank you. Alderman Bout, change your mind? All right. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. <clears throat> Kittleson? Aye. Kleinus? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surek? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 7 58 by Alder Persons. Boren, Balk, Bowers, Decker, Gisha, Hannah, Heidemann, Koth, Kittleson, Kleinus, Vanderweel, Vu, and Wangaman. Just about everybody that was there. <laughs> Section 3 of General Ordinance Number 75 05 06. So, as to reduce the city attorney's salary for the balance of calendar year 2009. Looking for a motion, <laughs> President Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, uh, ask for suspension on this, please. Second. We have a motion and a second for suspension of the rules. Uh, the reason for suspension, uh, Your Honor, if this passes tonight, this would go into effect, I believe, uh, for the first payday in July. So that's why we need to act on this tonight, if, it's, if it is to pass. Any uh, opposition to suspension of the rules? Okay. Do we have a motion? We need a motion to pass. We need a motion to pass. Um, motion to put the, uh, the general ordinance, ordinance upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Attorney McLean. No comment. Vice President Kisha. I don't, I don't profess to be able to speak for Attorney McLean, but I think on behalf of the citizens of Sheboygan and this council, uh, a... Uh, a thank you for the gracious manner in which you handled this uh, is in order. I didn't want this to go without that being said by someone. 
Thank you, Vice President Gish, and, and I too concur uh, to explain to the public what happened here is uh, Attorney McLean's office, um, he would have to have uh, laid off a, a member of his very small staff in order to meet the star <laughs> resolution, so instead he has decided to take a pay cut himself in order to meet, that, uh, meet those numbers. So he should be commended uh, as such. Any further discussion? We have a roll call, please. Clayunas? Aye. <clears throat> Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. <laughs> Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11, 6-46, communication number 13-09-10, submitting a communication from Aaron Brault, Program Specialist for the Non-Motorized Transportation Pilot Program, along with the results from the Bike and Walk to Work Week Countywide Public Employer Mileage Challenge and the Sheboygan County's Let's Get Physical 2009 National Employee Health Fitness Day results. Being for a motion to... Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the communication be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and a second under discussion? No. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? Um, 7 59 is referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 760. And 761, all referred. 7 62, resolution by Alder, Alder Person Clayunas authorizing the mayor to execute a community video tour book agreement. Vice President Kisha? Mayor Ryan, may I ask that this also be referred to Salary and Grievance Committee? I mean, pardon me, to IT Steering Committee? It lies over. Okay, that was lied over, but I'd you like would. It to be referred. You want it to be referred? You'd like it to be referred to the IS Steering Committee? Please. Under discussion? Mm -hmm. It will go to the IS Steering Committee. 7 63, we will hold for 773. We will take those two together. 7 64 is referred to finance. 7 65 through 7 dash. 70 are all uh, dealing with um, risk management uh, issues. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted for items 765 through 770. Thank you, Alderman, Alderman Bowers. We have a second. You okay? Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, 765 uh, through 770, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we have 771. An RC by the Committee of the Whole recommending passing the substitute of subs subsections <laughs> of resolution number. 6-09-10 as amended in order to add the last paragraph after 2009 with the Department of Public Works to begin implementation no later than August 20th, 2009. And one, the substitute of subsections of resolution of the same by Alderman Gisha, Hannah, and Bourne establishing the 2009 STAR program and directing all specified department heads of the city of Sheboygan to prepare and implement a 1% to 3% reduction in their current 2009 budgets. Looking for a motion to accept and adopt. Vice President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute of the subs of reg re uh, resolution uh, number 609-10 as amended also be passed and uh, put on file. Passed. And uh, passed, period. Forget period. about the file. Pretty good job. <laughs> not bad, that wasn't not that bad. easy. That was pretty good. 
Uh, under discussion. We need a second. Oh, we're looking for a second also. Second. We have a second. <laughs> under discussion. Alder Person Clayness. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in terms of the change in the resolution and the amendment, uh, the giving the Department of Public Works some extra time for implementation, I hope um, that the Public Works hears from a lot of citizens. We have been hearing from a lot of citizens regarding to the regarding the drop-off site, uh, condition of uh, city infrastructure, streets, um, parks, that kind of thing. And I hope that this this summertime, between now and August August twentieth, that we do have our ears open and the Department of Public Works especially is creative. I think there are some citizens who have some good ideas and um, in terms of saving money, in terms of alternative ways of doing this and I think we need to be open-eared and uh, very um, say attentive to what people have to say. And there's some people that want to speak two weeks from now, couldn't, couldn't get on the agenda tonight, who want to speak to this very issue. So I hope we uh, are receptive. Thank you. Thank you, all the person clients. If I may add, also between now and August 20th, um, we will uh, we are diligently working on our insurance offering for next year. Uh, we will have some uh, labor negotiations between now and then, and uh, hopefully we can find some uh, true cost savings in those. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. Uh, I want to just note the uh, that Public Works is being changed for a couple of reasons to August 20th. One is has to do with union contracts and dealing with our part-time summer help would have been incredibly disruptive. But the second, as Alderman Hanna alluded to about 40 documents ago, um, Public Works Committee has the ability, and now they have the time, if this passes, the ability to uh, deal with the drop-off site in another way. Uh, there's many things that are done at the drop-off site, like oil and batteries that could be dropped off someplace else. So maybe we, maybe there are other options. And this is a great opportunity for the Public Works Committee to step up and say, hey, we've got another alternative. We've got another way of doing this, yet still providing the taxpayers with the savings. So this doesn't just cut the issue off. Nobody's closing the drop-off site tomorrow. Uh, nobody would have closed it the next day or the next day. But now it gives, I think, the committee a great opportunity uh, to have input uh, up through August 20th, so another month or so of uh, diligent work. So hopefully that can be solved, and I think it can. We have a very talented Public Works Committee. Thank you, Vice President Kisha. Alderman Bowers? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, like the rest of us, I have received numbers of uh, email, phone calls, and I wish that people would contact their uh, aldermen or people and tell them what their suggestions are. I've received some very good uh, uh, suggestions, and I welcome any further suggestions. Now we have, what, two weeks to come up with something? Longer. Longer. No, we have until August 20th. It gives us about six weeks. Six. <laughs> That's when we vote on it, right? So it has to be done, let's say, within four or five weeks. Okay. So anyway, I, the citizens, uh, Keep, keep the suggestions coming, and uh, I myself will be attending Public Works uh, and adding my two cents, and I hope everybody else does. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. You know, if I may add on the, on the entire STAR resolution, this is not a uh, painless matter by any means. However, it's, uh, it's something that's necessary. Um, you know, we can't wait until 2010 and all of a sudden say our, our, whole, you know, our budget hole is this big. Uh, this is being proactive rather than reactive. Uh, it's preparing for next year. Uh, this uh, resolution can save us up to a million dollars, where all of a sudden our uh, $2.3 million hole just went down to $1.3 million for next year. And as we can get through some con contract negotiations, et cetera, uh, realize some savings in our, uh, our health care, uh, hopefully we can, uh, can, can balance, our, uh, balance our budget. And, and that's, that's the entire goal. One way or the other, we will. We have no choice. We're not like Washington. We can't, uh, you know, we can't print money. And uh, I think it's the intention of this council not to raise taxes. So one way or the other, we're going to balance it. I, I appreciate, appreciate everybody's work on this and uh, the cooperation of all of our employees. This is nothing that uh, anybody wants to do. I don't want to do it. I don't think anybody here does. Nobody takes delight in it. But it has to be done now in order to uh, get through uh, 2010 and uh, hopefully look forward to 2011. Alderperson Clayness. Thank you, Mayor. 
I, I agree with what you said. It was unusual in some of the calls that I received that um, some people said they would be willing to raise taxes. I just say that. Um, I, I just heard it. And I just say that there is a sentiment that maybe we're going as deep as we can go and that that's the, that might be the next step. Uh, I'm not saying what my opinion is at this point, but there are some people saying we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. So thank you. Appreciate that comment. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I guess I'd take a, a little different bent in that uh, this is a very popular issue. It's a very popular site, very easy uh, to use. I would suggest or, or uh, contribute that I've lived all over because of my, my military years, and I've lived in towns where the, in, the taxes were an awful lot lower, and they come and get the grass clippings, and they come and get the sticks and the bush pieces. So again, uh, you know what? We feel pretty like the world might end if suddenly we had to do something different with our grass clippings. But there are a lot of other solutions out there, some of which are a lot better. Uh, and what, the signal that I hope this sends is not that we're scraping the bottom of what the taxpayers are willing to live with, put up with, with their city services. Hopefully, what it may be is a teachable moment where if the Public Works Committee and the Public Works Director have identified that as being a practice that's so inefficient that the best thing we can do is shut it down and let commercial people, let people start a business where you take your grass, for, that that would be more efficient for the citizens and would turn out to be cheaper than having to raise their taxes. I, I, just, I guess I just get really frustrated when the answer is either we got to do it the way we've always done it or we have to raise taxes. There are an awful lot of great ideas out there where you can have what you want and pay less. And I guess I just hope that people would be open to that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. Next we have Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. And I guess I just have to reiterate as well, we've heard from so many people. And as I said, when we sat at the transit meetings, the, the, the sentiment was, please don't cut the services. I'll, I'll pay the extra to keep it going. I, and I know, you know, we don't want to do that to people, but we, we have to come to the table, all of us, and, and come up with some ideas and, and ways that we're going to do this, as, as it's been said, some creative ways. We've got to find a way to keep these services going and, and satisfy everybody. But that means everybody. Our, our, our union people, our, our department heads, our, our citizens, our common council, everybody. We've got to work this out. And I think we can. I, I really believe we can do it without cutting service to our citizens. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson, and we have Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hear from my constituents comments very similar to the ones that you heard tonight, but I've also heard a great fear out there. People are afraid that Sheboygan's going to go down the hill. I got a really great letter from a man who said that uh, he's lived in the city for 70-some years, as I have. I've lived here 74 years now. And I fear that the Sheboygan we once knew we're going to lose. Are we throwing out the baby with the bathwater? We seem to be absolutely terror-stricken of the idea of raising taxes at all. And I hear people out there say, look, be reasonable. I can't run my home on the same amount of money every year. I don't expect the city to do it. I don't expect them to be wasteful. I don't expect them to be inefficient. But if the city comes back at us with a small tax increase, we could understand that as long as we can maintain our services. And there's a fear of this out there. And people wonder, how can this work? How can we maintain the same budget amount year after year without raising taxes when everything goes up? I kind of wonder that myself. And I, I, I hate to see some of the services that we have out there uh, disappearing and, and waning away. The uh, closing of our ice skating rinks, the reduction of uh, snow plowing, things of this nature. I know, of course, if you close ice skating rinks, the city isn't going to crumble up and blow away. But these are all, you know, little quality of life things that made Sheboygan what it is. And uh, we can never go back home. I mean, we'll never get Prangy to build a store on Ethan, Wisconsin and have Friday nights downtown like we used to. That day is gone. But people don't like to see all these things disappear. And the, I've talked to many of them that are willing to pay for it, either through user fees or even a reasonable tax increase. And it, it seems to be a terror for this committee to say, hey, maybe we do have to raise taxes just a little bit. And people, I think, would accept it. They would not storm City Hall with torches and uh, ropes over their shoulders. You know, and uh, so it, it's something that has to be considered. Uh, they considered what was mentioned that perhaps we should have a user fee for the drop-off site. Uh, all kinds of things are under consideration, but I hear that from 
from people out there. Even Sunday, I, I, I dropped in at the hardware store to pick up a few nuts and bolts, and three people had me in the corner, you know, waving their arms. And uh, I was a little worried because we were near where the hammers are. And, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, not to treat this lightly because it's a very serious problem. And I understand the work that all our conditions, committees and stuff are doing on this, but I, I think we've got to look at everything here. And at some point, we've got to say, okay, enough. We're not going to cut your wagon down anymore. I, I've seen some cities where they do that, and I brought that up at the committee as a whole, but I don't, I, I don't think that's a road that our, our uh, constituents want to go either. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangerman. Uh, without being in danger of taking over this conversation, but uh, you know, I, was not, uh, I did not run for this office to raise taxes. Um, in my opinion, uh, our, our, our way to get out of this situation is to grow our way out of it, not to tax our way out of it. And uh, I fully intend to go that route. Now, of course, I don't have a vote on it. The Common Council does. If the Common Council decides to raise taxes, we're raising taxes. Myself, I won't agree with it. Um, this is a temporary thing here. This is not a permanent thing. A couple years down the road, if we grow our tax base, we get more money coming into the city, we get more people moving to the city, and it's done by providing jobs for people. It's done by getting, getting plants here. It's done by getting companies here. This is not that we're going to hold the line on taxes forever and we're going to be broke for the rest of our lives here and we're going to continue to shrink our city government. But sometimes the best efficiencies are realized through necessity. And that's the situation we're in right now. We're going to be forced to be efficient because we're going to have no choice. So, and with that, I will speak no more on this subject, but everybody else is more than welcome to. Vice President Gisha. Thank you. And I, I, I commend you for your comments on that. Um, just because we don't do the things the same way doesn't mean we can't do them. So I think uh, that was kind of the echo of Alderman Bauck. There are alternatives to doing things slightly differently that then can uh, be less expense for the city. I do know that budget times like this, you tend to look at things that never would ever be looked at before. And I think, Mayor Ryan, that's what you're talking about. And it, with uh, crisis comes efficiency. Uh, and I think this is a time for us to look at that. And I just wanted to, uh, with uh, uh, responding to Alderman Wangaman, uh, on the Finance Committee agenda, next week for the Finance Committee, we're going to have discussion, discussion only, on uh, 2010 budget and potential budget scenarios and resolutions. So to gather more input from, from citizens and councilmen. So if people have ideas, uh, keeping in mind we can only raise taxes, I believe, 3% this year, which would amount to like 400 grand, 450 grand, which won't solve our problem. Raising taxes will not solve our problem. Uh, and nobody really, it's hard to make a city attractive long-term for growth by saying, hey, we got the highest tax rate in the state, and gosh darn it, we have the highest paid city employees and the most city employees than anybody else in the state. You, you sell your city with efficiencies and low taxes and a great efficient workforce. And I think we do have a great efficient workforce in the city. And I do think it's getting kind of thin and maybe lightning will strike by, some people will think lightning will strike, but I also believe that we're probably down to the end of from an efficiency standpoint on a gross level when it comes to the Department of Public Works. That's right. Uh, I don't think we can, uh, they always feel they're a target, and uh, I think for a lot of good reasons they were, I think that's just about over. So now we need the next wave of ideas. This does save about a million dollars, about uh, $400,000 this year and a million dollars next year, but like Mayor Ryan said, we still need to find 1.3, 1.4 million. Uh, and that's before we look at bonding for the things that do sell a city, like roads, and sewers and stormwater sewers and great sidewalks and neighborhoods. That just gets us even. We have to find more to bond for that. So I agree with Alderman Wangaman. We need to be a great city again, and we're not going to do it without getting back to the bonding for infrastructure. And that's what we wanted to do. Thank you, Vice President Gisha. We now have Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess to echo some of the comments I've heard about uh, budget fixes and perhaps raising taxes, and I have heard those same comments too. Um, I've been laid off since April. My wife works at Thomas. She will be laid off by the end of this year. Um, I've owed myself a pay cut of 6% for what job I do have left, that being an alderman job. I can't ra afford a raise in taxes next year, nor can I expect anybody else in a very similar situation. There's a lot of people in the city in the city have the same situation as well. I guarantee you if we both are fortunate to find jobs in this town, it won't be the same wages we were getting before. 
So yes, the cost of running a city does go up, but my income has not, and it will probably go down. So I cannot afford the same thing, and I cannot expect anybody else in the city to, to afford the same thing as well. So I know it's on the table, people are talking about it, but it'll, it will be without my vote. And yes, the council does vote on the, on the budget, Mayor. You do have a veto, keep that in mind. Thank you, Alderman Rinflech. <laughs> Very nice to know, even though I did know that before, thanks. Uh, we now have uh, Alderman Hanna, who we haven't heard from uh, for a like while. 20 minutes. A couple things. Uh, as Alderman Gisha pointed out, the star resolution saves about 400000 this year and about a million bucks next year. Still leaves us short by about a million three. He also brought up an interesting point on bonding. We've got infrastructure projects to do. You do not want to go to the credit agencies with a 14% unemployment rate. Because once you get downgraded with your bond ratings, it takes you years to get those back. Uh, so as, as Mayor Ryan said, times will get better, but we've got to buy our time. And all the person in Fleisch and, and the other 14% of the people right now that wish they had jobs can't afford a tax increase. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. We now have Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Alderman from the 1st District wanted some ideas on how we could save money. I have one. Why don't we ask the police chief and the fire chief to get involved in contributing to how they can do things more efficiently? But we can't do that because the governor that Wisconsin just that sent to Madison has signed a document uh, along with the assemblymen we sent to Madison, along with the senators we sent to, to Madison, saying, municipalities, you're not smart enough to decide how to structure your city. You can't decide what level of public protection and safety is right for you. I'm going to sign a piece of paper saying you can't touch those budgets. So it makes it frustrating for people who want to help out my good friend from the first district when the good governor says we can't. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bulk. And finally, we have President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> this, this, predicament, this predicament that we're in, and I agree with, with Alderman Bulk, goes back to Madison. First of all, with, with uh, coming up with this idea that all municipalities around the state, uh, all school boards, all counties, have to make good on the state retirement fund because of the losses in the stock market. I've lost a lot of money. A lot of other people have lost money in the stock market and the retirements. Nobody is going to refund ours. Uh, the initial figure that I saw that it's going to cost us next year is $300,000. That compounds over five years to about $1.6 million. That was money that we, that we have no idea where we're, going to, where, we're, where we're going to get that money. So for example, uh, if we have a city employee that's making $100,000 a year, the taxpayers fund that retirement fund for that employee 100% at about 10.4%. So just in round numbers, if that person makes $100,000 a year in salary, the taxpayers are funding that employee's retirement by an additional $10,000. That is unheard of in the private sector. Years ago, it used to be a 50-50 split, and that was changed back in the 80s. And I, I tell a number of constituents that, and they're absolutely shocked. They cannot believe in this day and age that a retirement, that we have to fund the retirement fund for our city employees, 100% of it. And now because of the money that we have to pay back, that 10.4% is going to be going up to over 11%. There's going to be in, an increase in the tipping fees. It's, it's over doubled. I don't know what the exact do dollar figure is, but that's another thing we're being hit with. $100,000 a year in tipping fees that we're going to have to pay to get rid of the city's garbage. Uh, you know, I would encourage, I would encourage the cons uh, my constituents and all of the taxpayers in Sheboygan to call Senator Leibham and Representative Van Akron and have them introduce bills that public employees start making a 50 at least a 50% contribution in their own retirement fund. Uh, it's just totally ridiculous. I believe that out of the, the uh, $5 billion state deficit, that if the, if the uh, public employees would start paying at least half of their retirement, that would reduce the state budget by $2 billion. That's, that's what the, the state retirement fund does. So. Uh, and again, we had many projects we wanted to bond for. And the, uh, we wanted to bond for $5 million. We had to cut it down to a little over a $1 million because for every million dollars that you borrow, we have to pay back about 100000 
Uh, I, had, I had constituents over on 10th and Florida last year that were in rowboats last June uh, on their streets, and they've been waiting for that sewer project to be done for many years, and it finally got prioritized and was going to get done this summer. Well, because of the state retirement fund situation, we have to repay that. They're one our, bond, our bonding for, uh, for those projects. So a lot of the problems we're in, maybe we had something to do with, with previous negotiations of contracts with city employees, but a lot of it is being put on our backs from Madison. And that, I agree with Alderman Balk, I encourage the governor to butt out of city budgets. We're perfectly capable of uh, coming up with solutions to our problems without having a maintenance of effort put on us for police and fire protection for the next two years. It's totally ridiculous to tell us that we have to maintain spending levels for police and fire for the next two years at the same level we're doing in 2009. We are perfectly capable of making intelligent uh, changes in the table of organization, possibly at the, at the fire department, and also making intelligent adjustments to the police department's budget. But now our hands are, our hands are tied, which makes it even more difficult. Thank you. Thank you, President Bourne. Uh, and we have uh, Alderman Bowers, and I apologize for turning your light off earlier. I okay. hit the wrong button. Thank you, uh, Mayor uh, I'd like to just reiterate what, uh, whoops. Alderman Wangerman said uh, uh, we should probably look into more user fees. Uh, I, I know there's a, a lot of people say, well, this is just another tax. Well, it isn't a tax if you don't use it. So if uh, we could use this for different things, uh, I'm sure Public Works will be looking into this. And uh, I think perhaps uh, this has some merit to it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Now it appears all our lights are off. If there's no further discussion. We will have a roll call. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clyunas. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Yeah. Vice President Kishan? I apologize. I should have caught this when we zipped through some documents. Uh, 764, I was going to ask uh, for a potential suspension to follow 771, which we just voted on, because they go together and one includes the budget transfers. If, in fact, 771 was going to be passed, I just missed it as we were whipping through. Uh, we referred this to finance, but I'm asking we pull it back out and to uh, suspend the rules Second. for the transfer. What are the... Uh, Which one are you seven, I'm sorry, I skimmed through that just as quickly as I lost it. Uh, 764 were the transfers related to STAR, which, which I was going to ask to be moved back past 771 to give the council deliberation time. Uh, I missed it when we went through the documents. I apologize. So we have a motion and a second. Is that a motion to suspend? Suspend. Do we have any uh, objection to suspension of the rules on this? No discussion on suspension of the rules. Who, says, who seconded it? Hannah. Oh, I'm sorry. President Bourne seconded. <coughs> So we have now 7-64, correct? I apologize again. Nope, quite all right. Not like I've never made a mistake up here. Then I, I believe I need to make a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. We have a motion and a second to put 7-64 on its passage under discussion. Alderman Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, I, I just need to understand. You were going to send this to finance, and we don't need to do that now because you want to put this this uh, resolution through. Is that it, Jim? If I may, uh, it it because the because 771 passed, the next logical thing was to remove those dollars from the budget uh, as 771 dictated. Uh, so the logical step would be to clean it up and to complete the process. I was looking for a little red dot on me. <laughs> 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 
You work a little too fast. Okay, so we, uh, any discussion? Attorney McLean. Uh, to the extent that this is proposed to be a budget transfer, I would suggest that there be some language in here to the effect that uh, the city clerk be directed to uh, publish this document as a class one notice within 10 days of the change being made. Um, that's required for budget alterations under 6590 sub five of the Wisconsin statutes. And failure to give that notice precludes the uh, changes in the budget, so it wouldn't constitute a budget alteration. Alderman Rinfleischer, House Parliamentarian. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did not catch that. Thank you, Steve. Uh, but um, does that mean then that actually that we're not passing it upon the publish after, until after the publication? Do we, do we vote to pass on it now? And then after 10 days after publication, it would actually then be in effect? Or do we wait until after 10 days before we actually take the vote and, and post the announcement ahead of time? All right, take the vote. The, uh, I believe it's effective upon passage and publication, uh, but publication not as a class one notice. The class one notice is required by statute for budget alterations, but uh, would go into effect prior to that. Prior to that then, okay. Then if that was the motion to make that amendment using your language, I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second on the amendment, on the amendment only. Any discussion? All eyes. Hmm? No, we don't need a roll. Uh, on the amendment only, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now back to uh, passing the resolution. As amended. As amended. So moved. I believe I already made the motion to put the resolution. Oh, pardon me. As amended. I, as I move that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Second. And a second. Under discussion on uh, the resolution as amended. Oh. <coughs> no further discussion. Roll call, please. Jean had a question. Jean? Thank you, Mayor. Alderperson Kittleson. So then, we, so we go ahead with this. Does that mean then we're with all of these departments? Say we disagree with. I mean, are we are we written in stone here? Then this is what we're planning to do. Correct. The dollars are. The dollars are written in stone. The dollars are written in stone. But how we get there can still be... How we get there is... Is still up for discussion. It's very much negotiable. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Hanna? Yeah, just, you know, I know there was an alternative proposal from the uh, Public Works employees, uh, and that's up for discussion. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. President Bourne. Thank you. I, uh, I just want to second what uh, Alderman Hanna said. I had a chance to look over those proposals from uh, the DPW union, and I think there's some very good suggestions in there. So hopefully between now and August 20th, as part of the discussions of what services we're going to keep and what services we're going to modify, I hope we take into consideration those ideas from the DPW union, and it would be nice possibly if the, uh, the Public Works Committee could invite the representatives of the union to come in and go over their proposal. However, what I would like to see in those in that proposal, if it could be amended before the public works meeting, is I'd like to see some dollar amounts attached to their suggestions. On the bottom, one scenario <coughs> saves four hundred and eleven thousand and I believe the other one five hundred and eleven thousand, but I didn't really see how they arrived at those figures. So that would be I think very helpful for the public works committee and ultimately this body if it comes back to us to see some dollar figures attached to those proposals. And as I said, I hope that the union, along with management through the Public Works Committee, can fully, uh, can fully go over those ideas and hopefully come to some compromises where they make sense. Thank you. Thank you, President Bourne. We have Alderman Hanna. Uh, just a quick answer to uh, Alderman Bourne, President Bourne's questions. Uh, I also, I met with some individuals from Public Works. Uh, I had the same question, uh, and they shared specific dollar amounts. So we've got those, and those will be available on Thursday. 
Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Uh, Alderperson Kittleson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I just wanted to, to say as well that uh, definitely these their ideas will be on the agenda for up for discussion Thursday at the public works meeting so that and I guess I just wanted to be perfectly clear with you know how we're these proposals you know we're not these not, are not set in stone again they everything is up for discussion dollars are you know those that were uh, that's our reduction but how we get there and I guess I really want everyone to understand that how we get there is still going to be we're going to still be discussing that okay. very good thank you Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and Chairperson Kittleson may also encourage them to talk also about the leadership changes. They're proposing a lot of leadership changes, so that she may want to encourage a discussion about if these people go away, what are the span of control of, of the other managers who would be taking that role up? So it might be a good time to talk about how many people are needed to manage such a force as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. I have no more lights, no further discussion. We have a roll call, please. Rinflesh? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Balk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 16 Aye. ayes. Okay, we have held 7-63 uh, for 773. On 763. Wait a minute. There's 772. Oh, I'm sorry. One more, one more thing here. First, we're on 772. I apologize. Um, 772 resolution by Alderman Boren authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and common counsel regarding the quasi judicial hearing regarding the suspension revocation of beverage operators license number 79. 7979 and authorizing payment for said services. President Bohr. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We need a suspension. Oh, we need oh, a suspension. I'm sorry. First, first of all, I need to ask for a suspension. Second. We have a motion to suspend and a second. Uh, the reason for this suspension, Mayor Ryan and fellow council members, is that in all likelihood we're going to be Having holding a quasi-judicial hearing next Tuesday at the Law and Licensing Committee meeting. And the reason we need outside counsel is that Attorney Adams, who is usually the counsel's or the committee's legal counsel, acts as the prosecutor, and we have to hire an outside attorney to represent the interests of the Law and Licensing Committee and, and the counsel, ultimately the counsel. So that's the reason why we need uh, uh, outside counsel for, for these hearings. Any opposition to uh, suspension of the rules? None. Uh, we need a uh, motion to uh, pass it. Uh, motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? No discussion. Roll call, please. Sarek? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Kittleson, Clayunis, Montemayor, aye. and Rindfleisch. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, we've held 7 63 for 7 73. Do we need to file 63 first? Move to suspend the rules on 773, Your Honor. Alderman Bauck, we have a motion to suspend by Alderman Bauck in a second. Who, um, did, who did the second? Marilyn? If I may, by way of explanation, Your Honor. Certainly. Uh, this has to do with uh, hiring an attorney, hiring a law firm to help us through the uh, negotiation phase of our union contracts. Uh, and to give you a little history on this, uh, we, we discussed this back in early February at a meeting in early February. And what was supposed to happen was uh, we voted to hire this law firm, and then we did not get enough votes to fund the hiring of that law firm. Uh, and, the, and the purpose of that was to get more information from other law firms, a request for information. Uh, and that fell through the cracks through the transition of the previous administrations. I wasn't the mayor at the time. I wasn't the H acting HR director. I wasn't on the salary and grievance committee. But I'll take the heat for this. I've been the chair for a couple of months now. So it is what it is. We do not have more information from other firms about their fee structures. And we don't have that information we wish we had. But what we do have are negotiation, conversations about union contracts beginning tomorrow night without 
a law firm that specializes in union law or, or labor law to help us through that process. So given that, Your Honor, I, I have moved to suspend the rules so that we can uh, begin that relationship now and have their help uh, beginning tomorrow. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Under discussion? I was just going to say, uh, procedurally, should we file 763 before we take 773? Or? Yeah, I believe we need to. No, we should pass 7. I think you want to act on this my first. We want to act first? Okay, we're going to act on 773 <coughs> first. Uh, right now, the question is regarding suspension of the rules. Is there any opposition to suspending the rules? Alderman Bowers, do you have a question on suspending the rules? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Given that then, Your Honor, I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderperson Clayonis? Which one are we considering, 763 or 773? Uh, 773, which is uh, actually uh, making appropriations the to money hire first. Davis and Keel, though. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? On 773, we need a roll call. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Surik? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, I'd move to file 763 then, Your Honor. Second. Motion to file 763. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No, well, we matters. have some other matters in here. Oh, we got some other matters here. I believe they're all Attorney McLean, correct? I don't think we're at. Uh, there we go. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. Seven seventy four is communication from Dick and Donna Edmund regarding their concerns about closing the city's drop-off site and their concerns about the lack of a crossing lane from the parking lot on North 25th Street to the Sheboygan Aurora Clinic. That will be referred to public protection and safety. And, so and public works. And also public works. 775 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. And that will be referred to law and licensing. That's why I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Now, President motion Bourne. To, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're out of here.